Hi everybody, this is Bill Nissen again. And we're asking questions because questions reveal answers that will give us reasons to get out of your bed. And the question today is something that has to deal with a lot of battles that are going on in the world. And that is, you know, bad desires, addictions, problems that we have that we seem to keep doing even though we don't want to do it. Or sometimes we do want to do it, but we don't want to admit it. And so I, I want to address that because I think a lot of what we do to try to help people overcome desires is the very things that cause those desires to grow. When you tell people just to stop doing something, you're actually causing them to do it more. And I'll explain what I mean, but I'll also uh, share some examples. For instance, um, well, let's just put it this way. Okay, I got my... I got my uh, phone here and, and, and this can be an addictive thing, right? Especially these fancy things with all the videos and everything. But let's say I decided I don't want to um, look at my phone as much anymore. So I'm telling myself, I'm telling the friends around me, hey guys, hold me accountable. I don't want to use my phone so much. I want to reduce the amount of time I'm on my phone. I will not look at this phone all the time. What am I thinking about? while I'm saying I don't want to use this phone. I'm thinking about using that phone, right? Absolutely right. And so when we focus in on the thing we don't want to do, we're actually giving it more attention and more power. So self-will is, is not something that's going to solve your problem because you can maybe behave yourself for two, maybe three weeks, but at some point, you're going to break down because it's been part of your life and a habit for so long. And there's only one way I know to overcome those kind of problems. And it has nothing to do with uh, removing that desire. That desire is there. But there's a beautiful thing I've discovered. There's things I had incredible desires to do that were not good. But I learned that if you can overshadow that desire with a greater desire, then you can find victory. So let, let, me, let me give you an example of what I'm talking about. It's like I wanted to um, fit into my suit <laughs> for my daughter's wedding. And I was a little chunky at the time. <laughs> and, but I, that, that desire was greater than my desire for a steak. Okay, so my desire to fit in that suit was stronger than my desire to eat. So I ate healthier stuff. I behaved myself for a few weeks, lost some weight, did great. And, and I, I, I achieved that goal. But it wasn't until I was clear on that desire that I wanted to accomplish. Now, the same thing's true with God. There's sins and there's addictions and there's things that your body and you want to do. And instead of trying to tell you to stop doing it, I think that's the biggest mistake I see a lot of uh, things that go on in this world is we're focused in on what people are doing instead of why they're doing it. For instance, I was in an accountability group that um, they wanted just to meet every week to make sure we weren't still looking at naughty videos or if we, was, we weren't gambling or doing this or that or the other thing, whatever the guy's addictions were. And I go, guys, can you recognize the fact that all we're talking about is is addictions and problems instead of Jesus. And so I started to interact with some people and we did uh, some, some things together where all we did was talk about who God was to us, share what God was you know, speaking to us or, or revealing to us. And we started focusing in on our desire for Jesus to the point where we started seeing some things and they were becoming very tangible. And so that desire for Jesus overshadowed these desires and these addictions that were not good. So the only way I personally believe that you can overcome 
bad desires is to overpower it with greater desires. Because when I started having some connections with the Lord in, in ways that just blew my mind, I would still look at these things, but no longer did they have the savor because this tasted a whole lot better. So to overcome a bad desire, you overpower it with a greater desire. If you just try to behave better, it will fail. But if you overcome that desire with a greater desire, you will sail. You will fly in the things that God's called you to do. And that's really been my reality. So I always want to dive people into getting to know God personally and intimately. Because that desire will overpower anything. You know, there's a verse in Song of Solomon 8, 6. It says, love is as fierce as death and as consuming as shield. If a man were to give everything he had for love, it would be utterly despised. What does that mean? Love is more powerful than death. We know everybody's going to die. And love is more powerful than that, meaning it trumps everything. There's no way to stop it when you really feed it. That's the desire that will overcome death itself. That desire to love God with all your heart, with all your soul, with all your mind, is going to give you the power to overcome all when you know him. I hope this was helpful. And Father, I just pray that you would start to cultivate the desires that you placed in us to know you and to everybody that hears my voice right now. So that will overshadow the desires that we have found that have troubled us in this world. You have an amazing day, and we'll talk to you soon.